There are some of you out there that are looking for God to heal you. Um, maybe you've thought you've done everything that you could do and still nothing's happening. Well, let's see what the Bible says. If you go to James chapter 5 verse 14, it says, Is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. So first and foremost, you got to go to church. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if you are sick, whether it be mentally, physically, financially, <laughs> if you are sick, you need to go to church. And then once you get to the church, you need to find somebody that's an elder. That means they are experienced in the word of God. They walk with God. They know God. Okay. Um, elders of the church to pray over you. And then they will anoint you with the oil in the name of Jesus. So that's what that just said. Then this is what the Bible says. This is what God says. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Now there's a difference between being well and being healed. Because listen, listen up, listen up. You don't want to miss this, okay? The Lord, after that, it says the Lord will raise them up. He's going to elevate your life, okay? You're going to start to live a better life. And if they have sinned, they will be forgiven. All of this is on the count of the prayer of faith that was prayed over you. So now you're, you're well. Your life has been elevated. And if you have sinned, your sins are forgiven. Okay? This is the power of the church, by the way. But listen to this part. Therefore, now is, is, is your turn. This is God's commandment to you. Now that you found the church, the church done its part. Now it's time for you to do your part. It says, therefore, confess your sins. Listen, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. This is another reason why the church should be an important part in your life. Because the church is where you will find somebody that you can confess your sins to and pray with. Matter of fact, y'all confess to each other and pray with each other. If you have a husband or a wife, the church will teach you how to confess, confess your sins to one another and pray for each other. You confess your sins to them and then after that, don't just leave your sins confessed. You need to pray for each other so that you may be healed so when i read this i was like okay god there's a difference in being well and being healed and the reason why god spoke to me he said your sickness is just a symptom the real issue the root of the issue guys is sin because once you pray once you confess your sin and once you are forgiven for your sins you may be healed that's coming from the word of god there's a difference between being well and being healed that's why people come to church we pray for them they get well and then they stop coming because they are not dealing with the sin issue they're gonna have to come back because they're gonna get sick again so listen to me, if you are sick and you've been praying and people have been praying for you, people have been anointing you and you, you feel well, but then all of a sudden you get back sick, maybe it's a sin issue. Find someone you trust in the Lord. Confess your sins. Y'all pray for each other and then you will be healed. And then it ends with this. Well, it doesn't end, but the verse 16 ends with this. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. It's not saying a prayer of a perfect person. It says the prayer of a righteous person, a person that has already confessed their sins and has been forgiven for their sins and has uh, repented in their lives. They've changed their lives for the better. Somebody who walks with God and when they do wrong, they know how to confess their sins. That's a person that's righteous. Not a perfect person, but somebody who know that they need the blood of Jesus to be righteous. That person's prayer is powerful and effective. That's how you was able to get well in the first place. The church did their part. They prayed for you, but now you have to do your part and confess your sins. We don't want you to just be made well. We want you healed. 
We don't want to just take care of the symptoms like the world does. We're going to take care of the symptoms and we're going to dig up that roots, that sin issue in you. My God doesn't do things halfway. So he's not just going to, he's not just going to heal you, but he's going to, hey. he's going to take care of that sin issue too. Hey. And he told you how you have to confess it. Mommy. Um, if you come to our church, I don't tell nobody's business. I don't tell your business. You can confess your sins to me and you can trust and believe that I will pray for you because I want you to be healed. I don't just want you to be well. We're going to dig that thing on up. But I realize that's why people don't come back sometimes. We deal with the outer part and then we forget to deal with the sin issue, the inner part, so you don't get sick again. My pastor always say, sometimes when you're dealing with an outer Per, an outer part of sickness It's a sin issue on the inside that you need to take care of I promise you As soon as you confess that sin As soon as you pray and then you feel the forgiveness The 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 Holy Spirit Just brings about a peace Over you That's what he means when he says that peace that surpasses all understanding So Don't just get well Get healed In Jesus name